Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for a special presentation of theCUBE, IBM Interconnect. Uh, this is our CUBE special program. We go out and extract the signal noise. Our next guest is Steve Robinson, GM of Cloud Platform Services with IBM. He's a Bluemix guy. That's we interviewed right. him last year when he came off the stage announcing Bluemix. Welcome back, great to see you. Thanks guys, I tell you, it's <laughs> always good to see you and always good to have you at our show as well, thanks. So, you know, are you in a pinch me moment? Like, am I dreaming? Because <laughs> when we interview, you came right off stage. It's like, okay, we're doing Blue Mix. We're all behind it. Go! You know, well, that, like, that was our beta then. You know, yeah. at that point, we barely knew what we had. We, yeah. we had our Cloud Foundry version. We collected a handful of services, and then we're like, let's go. So and you guys have been successful. So give us a quick update. I mean, it's a great journey. Sure. A lot of speed. A lot of rapid acceleration on your end. Yeah. So we, we launched it in beta. Uh, we got commercial terms around it at the end of June. Uh, we announced this week 100 services on top of the platform. So we've taken every piece of middleware within IBM, we've converted it into a set of services. We've got some great unique ones like Watson. Uh, in November, we announced dedicated Bluemix. So uh, SoftLayer's got a great thing where you can do single tenant, private resource. So we can now drop Bluemix on top of that. And then we gave a sneak preview on stage on Monday, local Bluemix. So now local, dedicated, public, we now have a complete hybrid mechanism to uh, really get the enterprise account charged up. So, so I want you to answer the question, it's not from me, I'm just paraphrasing <laughs> what sure. the sentiment is. Ah, IBM, Bluemix, that's ah, Cloud Foundry, they're really not committed to the cloud yeah. with Bluemix, pass. I mean, you guys have been successful, you have the proof points. Internally, what's it been like? It's been pretty much game on internally. It's been unbelievable. And what's, what, you, yeah. uh, what have you guys nailed down this year? Yeah, Share well, with your audience to yeah. answer that question. Well, I think the key thing you find is, you know, you know, from the chairman down, we're 100% committed on the cloud right now. From the, the acquisition of software to the rollout of the data center, 40 data centers we're going to put this thing on. Uh, and just from where we were in February to, to where we are today, you know, we had an estimation that we would probably have 20,000 apps up and running on Bluemix by the end of the year. 200,000 is what we've been into. We expanded that out to London, we've got it coming into AP. Uh, the, the amount of enterprises that have been excited around the dedicated piece, it's been, it's been unbelievable. The support from IBM and also the support from the community, uh, the momentum behind the Cloud Foundry piece, uh, we've seen uh, acceleration unlike anything we've ever seen. We have, a, we have one of your customers in here, um, um, the- uh, Nigel Silverman. Nigel, yeah. who said, Without Blue Mix, he wouldn't have finished the races. Real impact to his business. I mean, this is like 150 miles an hour in the ocean. Okay, <laughs> he's trying to get to 210. Right so now. Blue Mix, Blue Mix is working. It's, you're shipping code. You're shipping solutions. Well, I think what it's Watson's done, in, in, embedded in it. And I think what you're seeing is that you know it's bringing this. You know, I think other paths that had kind of opened up the opportunity to, to really do innovation and really do it at speed. And most enterprises had held back a little bit from that as well. But now with the IBM name behind it, plus the type of services that we're putting on top of Bluemix, they see their favorite type of middleware starting to come. Uh, they see a capability and enterprise grade software that they know and love. And now they're putting their toe in the water as well. Guys like Silverhook, you know, when you're racing 200 miles an hour yeah. offshore, sensors all over the place, you know, virtual reality around the, the thing. They get all the pieces together to. to yeah, this is not this is not an R and D project. Blue Mix is out delivering value. Talk production. about the integration. I mean, to me, that's a key part of it, sure. right? Because pe people don't wake up and say, "Oh, I'm going to go get me some pass." Yeah, you know? yeah, they yeah. Want a solution. <laughs> so, well, it was funny. We had uh, Jim Dieters on stage with us this morning, and Jim does the the pure startups. And you know, for for a lot of the the smaller companies that are doing pass for the first time, you know, it's naturally where you go. I'm going to run on the cloud, and I'm going to have an environment that brings services to me as well. Our enterprise accounts, though, you know, they've got a, a large set of kind of crown jewels back behind the firewall as well, and they're waiting for somebody to say, how can I use those in the equation? You know, some of the cloud vendors say, well, just port it. Some of these environments, they've been running for years and decades. They're not going to undertake a port, but how do you bring that to the case? So one of the things we announced this week as well was uh, secure gateway. So let me kind of use my, uh, my mainframe environment. Let me use my on-premise environment. Let me bridge that back out to the cloud. A uh, brand new API management set of services as well that lets me better wrapper those and be able to integrate it. 
uh, and then also kind of a federated catalog. So I can actually use some services local where it makes sense, and I've got latency concerns, security concerns, but then I can use all these great public APIs with it at the same time. So we're getting a lot of novelty on how we're bringing the cloud down to where they are today, plus giving them the option to reach out as well. So what's going on in the app? You've mentioned a number of applications, like hundreds of thousands. So, so talk, give us some, a sample. Oh, like, sure. where, where, how would you categorize them? How should we be thinking well, I, about them? I think, uh, with the passes, I think most firms are finding that uh, it's almost a programmer's renaissance right now. Mm. So, uh, you, for one, it's such an easy environment to get, get up and going. It's almost like you have unlimited data resources, you've got unlimited compute resources, and now you can play with uh, middleware that you would have never had exposure to as well. So we see tremendous amount of uh, exploration going on. So we got one partner working with us, and uh, they started working on how do we uh, bring technology into a, a retail store experience to kind of augment what the customer deals with. So traditionally we're bringing plasmas in and they could actually tell if you're male or female uh, and they were using it initially for like a, a bike store to see, uh, you know, help me uh, pick out what kind of bike you would use. We launched the Watson services and one of the things we have in Watson is we can analyze your past 100 Twitter feeds and come up with the five personality traits that you have. And uh, so they played around with that and they got some, some, uh, some cute feedback from it. And they said, that's a nice parlor trick. But then a large car company saw that and said, hey, maybe we could use that in the dealership. The individual walks in, gives me their Twitter handle, maybe I could use that to help assign the salesperson to them to increase the sales in the dealership as well. No one had that on the radar screen, but because the ease of use of playing with these services, things are just popping up. Is that now a new product? Is that Was that productized, or is that just more of an anecdotal well, the, uh, the, the, the company that sells IQ, that's a reference of ours, you know, they've already have stood up the, the Watson services and uh, they, they launched it at South by Southwest uh, last year and now they're playing yeah. around with other options. Well, we were talking to Docker earlier really, this word stand up is a, is, a, is a cloud term, right? Stand up some servers, in a which means not provision it, take weeks to provision. That's a cloud term, but that's now, now proliferating to social media, to business. Standing up fast is a cloud DNA. Well, you know, I spent, five, I spent five years at Rational, and you know, we were dealing with more traditional style of development. And you know, it, it was unfortunate, but you know, it used to be look at old software projects, 68% of them never saw the light of day. It wasn't because we had bad programmers, but to do a project you had to allocate the hardware, you had to allocate the middleware. Sometimes it took six months to lay out WebSphere and MQ and whatever you're going to put on <laughs> top nightmare. of it as well. Then you build the app, then you have to test it, then you got to fight with the CIO to get on the production schedule, and oh, they're upgrading SAP that, that year, you're off, that the, year. You're off the table. <laughs> <laughs> come, come like uh, when we might replace our Cisco routers, that's about a 12 week yeah. just yeah. assessment. It took all the budget immediately. <laughs> yeah, right. so, so we're at a point, we're at a point now we're seeing <laughs> guys, you know, <laughs> programmers, just, it's like a, in a candy store. They're now saying, I can I can launch a basic application and I may do a version for East Coast, I may do another version for West Coast, I may do one for a subset region. They can now explore and try things that were just completely yes. unthinkable. You know, the five, creativity five is on the table, pretty oh, much. It is. That's what it you're is. saying. Well, we've actually have stood up, we've got two of these blue mix garages up and going. I've got one in San Francisco and we opened up the second one in London as well and we kind of have it as an innovation center. So customers can come in and we, we actually located these on, uh, on uh, startup campuses. So we're at uh, Galvanize in San Francisco and at Level 39 in London. So a lot of companies are saying, let's, let's figure out how to kind of build my first born on the web application. So they come in, we help them with design thinking, we help them with a kind of consulting practice. Within four weeks, they've got that application up and running on Bluemix and, and Softlayer. Now, while we, we based it in the startup communities, we thought our first clients were all going to be startups, which we've had good luck yeah. with them, but it's the enterprises. You know, it's the big insurance companies, the big banks, the big retailers that are coming in, and they all want to act like a startup for the... For, so for what are those guys doing? What are, they, are, they, are they writing greenfield apps? Are they deploying mobile apps? Are they uh, sort of refreshing older parts of their portfolio, it, all of the above? It's a, it's a mix. You know, I think many of them are key thing on their list is they're trying to look at, one, their core businesses and where could they be disrupted. I had one that came to me, said we better disrupt ourselves before we get disrupted by, by, uh, by a startup. Because uh, in all these campuses, you know, you got hundreds of guys that are just figuring out how to take a pot shot at these big it's enterprises. Like City yesterday, saying people oh. need, need banking, they don't need banks. No, like, oh. I, yeah, I need banking. <laughs> I, don't need, I don't need brick and mortar. So some of them are saying, let's look at our core businesses and see how we can augment that. How can we get better reach uh, into our, our client base? You know, we had one client who uh, 
brought us the problem that uh, they wanted to sell insurance to a, a category of user that they had never touched. It was the guy that never did financial planning, never saved money for college, but they had no way to reach him. So they used Bluemix to build a, almost a video game where he inputted you know, just five basic financial goals. We put some great graphics around so it looked like a video game, et cetera. We really didn't think it was much of an app. The guy collected five data points. They were thrilled. This was five data points on a, on a constituency group that they, had, they were blind to, completely in the dark. So just getting access to them, getting insights, extending existing applications, you know, it's wide open. So talk about the um the big picture for customers, right? Because sure. there's a lot of noise in the in the in the in the market right now. A big variety of reasons, exploding in value, sure. and there's some lanes are forming. We're seeing consolidation in the OpenStack play in the OpenStack market, for instance. Um, break it down. OpenStack, the past layers, the variety sure. of different flavors where Blue Mix is, sure. is playing, and then I'll see mobile first, or anything else on top of the stack. Big data and whatnot, yeah. Tom Watson. Yeah, and I think you know we've learned a lot in the past year as well. When we first built Bluemix, you know, one of the reasons we had uh, developed it on Cloud Foundry is we wanted to leave the option open that should we put it on multiple infrastructures that we could easily use the portability of Foundry to be able to do that. And then, kind of, you know, around the first half of the year, it was clear that you know this was going to be a, a deep pocket, full stack play from top to bottom, and that's when we really started using on optimizing the full software stack. Uh, up and down. I think the, the challenge for most public clouds, you know, you're playing almost a three-dimensional game here. So, so one is to get your global coverage as right as possible. So how can you quickly, mm -hmm. are you going to go with a mega data center? Or are you going to go with as many data centers as possible? We're going to go as, as many as possible. So we've got 40 in the works right now. We announced four new ones uh, this week. And uh, how we have those communicate, how easy it is to move data, how easy it is for enterprises to deal with data privacy and locality issues, et cetera. So that's going to be how, how quickly can you provide that's worldwide support. And then you go deep. And, uh, and I think what most firms are looking at is can you provide me a robust infrastructure that lets me do things public, uh, do things in a more private fashion, and then do things local for me as well. So things like OpenStack then gives you that consistent infrastructure. So software, I can go with uh, software infrastructure public, software infrastructure dedicated. When it's back on the client's machines, it's within their firewall itself, I've got to have some good rock solid base to do that on. OpenStack is the, is the perfect choice. Remember the old OSI well. interconnect models? There you, you go. Know, so, yeah. so, is that what you mean by going deep? That you're essentially forming, not like layers like that, but like similar stack, so private, Hybrid, yeah. public, you, I mean. Right, you want to make sure you've got at least enough common architecture so that what you build on that environment may have legs and you can actually, you know, do something else with so it. So that's down what you the mean road. by going deep. Yeah. So going, being going deep, deep, being deep in functionality stack right. for the apps. Right. Global's more of an infrastructure play. Across the board. Okay, and that's because, where. Because case in point, if you look at it right now, I'll, I'll talk to a typical enterprise account, and uh, are you going to go cloud? And they'll all say, yep. Uh, how about public cloud? And they're like, nope. <laughs> or they'll say, you know, in eight years, I plan to have 50 to 65% of my workloads on the public cloud. You ready to do that today? I'm nervous. <laughs> nervous about security, nervous about multi-tenant, I'm nervous about the noisy neighbor. But how about if I give you a, a local instance today to let me start building, and once we get you more comfortable with this model, you could actually take those components, move that application with no change to a dedicated environment. Sounds good to me. And maybe down the road you want to take part of that, move it to a public environment. That sounds fabulous. So it's a GPS problem. They know where they are today. They kind of know where they want to go, but nobody's providing them the road network to get between point A and point B. You would I'd argue that you know Amazon might say, hey, we're winning the enterprise. We just scored the CIA, we supply the government, we're going into the enterprise. The CIA was a little bit while back. I haven't heard many more <laughs> since that as well. No, but so you guys had uh, a but part of their but challenge, you know, is, is definitely uh, you know public is the way to yeah, go. But that's, and, but that's and, their messaging. They're saying, you know, we can do both. Security is not a problem. They say, they answer the security. So, well, public cloud to them is a you know a hammer, and every opportunity is a nail. Yeah, so we, we and, run into and, that as well. But. It was a I, you know, the CIA deal is interesting. To me, it was a wake up call. You, you guys woke up before that. But IBM's a lot like Abe Lincoln, <laughs> right? Seriously, it's a battleship, but it will turn. Right, right. right. It, Abe Lincoln took forever to make decisions. He's honest, smart, but <laughs> once he made a decision, boy, right, focused. That's yeah. the way IBM is. Right? Well, it, we're we're one hundred percent behind it. Whether it's a wake up call, I'll, I'll give you points on that one. But uh, but we're we're fully behind this thing. Well, yeah, I, again, I think it, it, I'm sure internally, you know, well, you well, know I, I think, that, but I think but. the challenge. I think a lot of these pure pure cloud, pure public cloud guys, you know, we've been around. A few people say, you know, IBM's been a, a little bit slow to the game. 
Uh, I think the, what they don't realize is, you know, we've been doing enterprise-grade development for decades. We've been doing enterprise middleware for yeah. decades. You bring right. a problem to us, IBM just does not blink. We've seen it all Yeah, it's before. totally true. You know, from, uh, you know, I, 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 I applaud work in the government, but you know, IBM made its name back when we did the first census, right? We did the NASA program. You know, we, we've done federal projects before. Yeah, it really becomes a product issue. It's like, okay, that's a focus. Customers want that. Yeah. Once that's nailed, it's an engineer. You have all the engineering. You have the software. And, and I think what you're going to find is some enterprises, you know, some of their environment that they would like to extend portions of it out will never be ported. You know, these systems are so tuned and they're so optimized and they're so audited and they're under so much regulatory control that keeping those close, keeping those local is exactly where they need to be. But to be able to extend those out and be able to use those in new ways and fashion, I think IBM has a, a very yeah. unique opportunity. Yes, to and that. I think though, I think that for a long time, companies like IBM and, and others, you weren't alone in the enterprise, used that as a wet blanket to say, okay, yeah. well, we can just sort of do our private cloud thing, and then, boom, you had to internally make the decision to take all those capabilities and assets you had and cloudify them, That's if you right. will. That's you right. made some acquisitions, which were key, yep. and then, boom, now it's a, it's a whole different landscape right yeah. now. So we're getting the hook here, but all I do right. want to get some a uh, couple last questions in quickly. Sure. Comment on, um, Everyone big wants to be small, small wants to be big, that's a theme we've heard, you mentioned it. Uh, but entrepreneurship is thriving, right? You were, you've been talking about it, the show here. Um, entrepreneurship startups, there's a huge opportunity for collaboration. You guys are working with startups in the cloud, you're also IBM, but what's, what's the, uh, your advice, what's your directional view of the startup landscape in the enterprise and opportunities for entrepreneurship. You know, I, I think we're going to see models there that just would have been unimagined prior. Like you said, you're seeing, uh, you know, you're seeing the cats and dogs lying down together here. You're seeing the enterprises not only being attracted to the startups, but how do they start to include them in the ecosystem as well? Uh, we had City on stage, as you said, yesterday as well. We're working with them to sponsor a, a national hackathon where they open up APIs. We bring Bluemix to the table with all of our services. We're getting other sponsors to bring their APIs. And who are they opening it up to? Not to city developers, but to the startup community. So they would love the startups in Silicon Valley and Tel Aviv, et cetera, to see what can they now build with this wide swath So do you as see the well. success of like Docker and open source with developers, which is obviously collaborative. Yep. Um, now moving over to the business, technical business model side of it with startups, because if the new way to work or the new way to think is to be collaborative and in, in the open, yep. with big data, everything's being watched sure. out in the open, is there a new model of startup collaboration with the big companies that, that are out there in a way, it's kind of like that model of like open source. You, you definitely going to, you know, it's all going to be community based. You know, the more guys you have around it, the more numerous companies, the more innovation, the more long standing. You know, a lot of the guys on the West Coast, you know, well, I'm, I'm open source. I put my code out in the open. But unless you have multiple people contributing to it, it's not going to be a standard that lives longer term. So I think companies are seeing that as well. If they want to be viable long term, can they be attracted to a wider community of technology providers and also bringing their ideas to the table as well? That's how you differentiate, that's how you keep from being disrupted. Yeah, a new way to do business, new business models. Steve, thanks so much for coming. You went over a little bit. I want to get that entrepreneurial angle in. I know it's near and dear to your heart as well as uh, the cloud here at IBM. We are theCUBE, broadcasting live in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after the show break.